Hi, I'm John Rafano from VAST, and this is Ultimate S Lite Training. In this section, we're going to take a look at the Lower Thirds tab. Lower Thirds are the graphics that go behind people's names you see sometimes on TV. We have a collection of Lower Thirds that you could easily apply to make your production look slick. Let's take a look. Selecting a Lower Third in Ultimate S Lite is as easy as just picking a name from a list. Uh, and, and we ship with uh, just 10 of them. Uh, as an example from Graph Pack 1 and 2, but you could certainly purchase Graph Pack uh, 1 and 2. There's a number of Graph Packs available from VAST. We've got eight of them uh, so far. Uh, and, and really, you could just uh, down arrow through these and see um, the different lower thirds superimposed on your current frame of video. Now, these are um, all have motion to them. So, you know, we've got one representative shot of the uh, of the lower third, but really that lower third is going to have motion. So let's let's pick one like this that will have motion um, and decide to apply it. Now I'm going to apply it to the track above the selected track. And when I click apply, uh, and we'll dock this so you can see what's happening, uh, the lower third has been applied. We'll look over here in the preview, and when I play back you'll see um, the motion graphic that is created. There it comes up with the motion graphic. You can put your text over it and then it wipes away. So let's do that. Let's, let's add a track. I'm going to hit uh, Shift Control Q to add a track. Double click on the lower third so that I select that region. Right click and say Text Media. Uh, and that brings up a, a Text Media event. All right, and then we're going to add a, a Text Media to this. Uh, Oh, Joe Batter here. Let's uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. And of course, I want to I want to kind of uh, take a look at where I where I am here. So I'll get this back out again and correct a get that a little bit bigger. Go to the placement, move it down uh, into this area. And now, I probably don't want that uh, text to come in right at that point. I probably want to wait until the fill ends. And you'll notice we've, we've got a little point in here where the fill ends. And we'll uh, shorten it to that and then have it f fade on just before that. And let's, let's see what it looks like. So here's a graphic. It does its little thing. And Joe Batter fades on. Now that wipes away, so we might want to get our text to wipe away. So I will uh, create a little transition here. I'm going um, to right click on that and change the transition. And I uh, want to change it to a maybe a Sony push. And we want to push this to the right. And it should wipe off the screen accordingly. Right now it happened a little bit too slow, so we'll make it a little longer. There we go. Make it a little quicker. And I want it to end a little bit before. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, I want it to end a little bit before. And there it is, all going off together. Your lower third. So let's take a look at some of the other options in here. Um, Matching the project aspect is a good option to keep selected so that whether you're doing widescreen or 4.3, or it'll, it'll map. You can change the length. Um, you can choose how they appear on the screen. So they can just appear, they can fade in, they can push right, left, up, and down. Uh, so for the ones that are not um, as animated as this one is, uh, you can decide how you want that to uh, appear on the screen. Let's, let's take one that's, um, that's maybe a little bit more static. So I'm going to... Select this here and uh, try to go find one. I think this uh, laying pipe might not be as, as animated. Um, and what I'm going to do, because I already have one on the screen, I'm going to make sure I check Replace Existing Event as a Take. And I've selected the uh, event that I want to replace. Uh, and then I want to have this thing uh, push up onto the screen as it, as it comes in. So we'll apply that. Uh, and now you'll see there's been a push up applied down here. And when I play it, uh, it pushes up on the screen. All 
All right, so these are just for the ones that aren't as animated, you can control uh, whether, and, and we probably would have want to put a, a push down as well on that. And we'll, we'll do that one more time. And now it'll push up and it'll push down. So it pushes up. We probably want to adjust the text to push up as well, right? And then it pushes back down. Uh, you can, if you, if you want to space out a number of these across the timeline, uh, you can click repeat and re repeat it several times and determine the spacing. Uh, you can add these to the selected track, uh, to a tr new track above the selected track, a new track below the selected track. So maybe you've created the text first and you want to put the lower third below it. Or as you saw, we can uh, replace it as a, as a take. And these truly are takes. So I can uh, go down and click the T key <clears throat> here and switch between uh, the takes that I've put in there. Uh, then finally, we can uh, pre-render these graph packs. The graph packs are um, um, Vegas project files. Uh, and some of them, and the reason they're project files, it's a very uh, lightweight way to deliver them. Uh, but some of them might run a little slow in high definition, so you might want to pre-render them. So if you click on pre-render, uh, what it will do is bring up a dialog that allows you to select the ones you want to render, and then select the format that you want to render them room in. So you, there's a number of HD formats, uh, and NTSC and PAL uh, DV formats as a video overlay because you want the transparency there. And it will pre-render the graph packs and, uh, and, and it renders them out as uh, QuickTime animation files. And then the next time you go to apply the graph pack, it will use that QuickTime file instead of using the uh, Vegas project. And it will uh, perform a lot quicker, uh, of course, and uh, do the final render a lot quicker. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of the uh, tools that are available in the lower thirds tab of Ultimate S Lite. Well, hopefully this has given you a pretty good idea of what Ultimate S Lite can do for you. Now it's time to add your creativity. If you have any questions, you can always contact us at ultimate support at vast.com. And if you don't have Ultimate S Lite yet, you can download it from our website. Until next time, thanks for watching.